What's up, everybody? I'm Kansu, and this is the Crystal Corner. Today, we're going to be going to the river. It's September 14th, 2019, during this beautiful, beautiful harvest moon, full moon, in Pisces. The day that the moon went full is the day I believe that Tupac got killed. So we're going to call the harvest moon on September 13th the Machiavelli moon, okay? This is the Machiavelli moon. And we're going to be talking about almost fail. It's cool, though. Uh, we're going to be talking about resurrection because that's what Machiavelli was about. Resurrection, bringing things back, bringing things back to their proper order and their proper way. And how... In the hell do we do that, console? So look, I deal with primarily three different spiritual systems because they all go together. You know, the law of correspondence and the hermetic principle, speaking of hermetic principles, is Jehudi, Hermes, uh, Hermes Trismegistus, that means Hermes, three times great, also known as Thoth or Mercury, all the same guy, okay? He's a god of wisdom. So these messages today are coming from Lord Jehudi. The three systems that I primarily use is obviously Kemetics, okay? Then we have the Orishas, and we have the Hindu Divas. Now, how does this relate to the Law of Correspondence? Well, we have the As Above, So Below, right? As Above. It's like a pyramid going up. It's like a triangle. I can't make one with my fingers right now because, well, let's try. So you got a triangle going up. That's fire. That's as above, right? So below is water. That's why I'm at the river right now to balance out my soul, which is fire, with that water below, okay? The Orishas are typically considered in some thought processes as terrestrial beings. Terrestrial meaning earth dwelling, right? Like we are, we're earth dwelling. So that would be the so below, or what I would consider the physical manifestation of cosmic energy, right? How do these people operate on earth, okay? The cosmic level of that would be considered the Netsuru because they are birthed out of the waters of noon, and the waters of noon are physical waters, they're cosmic waters. You look up, you see the sky. Right over yonder, right over yonder, that blue is the blue waters of noon, right? So that's the as above. That gives you the cosmic thought process or the star imprint of these guys, goddesses, right? And how their energy operates on the above level. So your soul level up there, middle level or your lower level, the earth level down here would be the Ori, how they move on earth. Because the Ori live on Earth, right? With the exception of a few, like Obatala and Rumula, things like that, sky dwellers. But same thought process. The Hindu devas or divas are the midpoint between that. When you balance out the as above and so below, you get the divas. And how did we figure this out? Well, Jehudi told me. You look at how many arms they got. They usually have arms going up and arms going down. That's showing you as above, so below, right? They have um, usually four main things that they're dealing with. Um, like with the example of Lord Shiva. In one of his forms, he's the dancing Shiva. Ring of fire around him represents your ring of fire, your crown chakra, the cosmos, stepping into that gateway, right? He holds fire for creation. He holds a drum he also holds a couple other things. I can't think of them off the top of my head right now, but he, he's holding four different things, right? Four different aspects. And um, each one of the aspects pretty much deals with an element. There's four different elements, right? Four different arms. This is to get back on topic to try to explain how the divas are the midpoint. So when you balance out your Ori energy, there's seven African powers with seven chakras. So each one of those deals with the different chakra 
you learn to balance out your chakras by dealing with the Orishas, right? You deal with the Ori because there's seven main African powers, which is another name they're known under. Each one of those has a different aspect. You got your crown, Obasala, you've got Papa Leg by the gateway opener, which would be considered your root chakra. You've got Ochun, which is the midpoint, um, which would be considered your heart chakra. And you do those things by different types of rituals. Each one of those Ori has rituals. Um, to open the gateways with Papa Legba is to open your root chakra to allow the energy to flow through you, right? To do a head cleanse with Obatala is to open you to the gateways above you. Balance those out, you get the divas because the divas are doing the as above and so below simultaneously, okay? So, these are the reasons why I deal with three main different systems, which are the Ori, the Netsuru, and the Hindu Devas. Because you have to balance out that as above, so below in every aspect. Spirituality is not supposed to be religious. Religious meaning you're dealing with one thing and one set of rituals devoutly. You should never do anything like that because it stops you from your growth. It stops you from understanding how things go together. The way spirituality is supposed to work is it's, um, it's like putting together a puzzle. Each spiritual system has its own puzzle piece. The more spiritual systems that you study, the more that you're able to put these pieces to your reality together to make sense of it and actually do something with the energy, okay? You deal with one thing, you're stifling your growth, and you're only allowed or able to move down one avenue, which is a third dimensional thing. We can only move front, back, side, side. So you're strictly operating in your own re energy. You're doing that. It's because it's earthbound. You know what I'm saying? You start dealing with the cosmos, with the Netsuru, you start to pull yourself off of Earth, up into the sky. You're like, okay, now I understand how. The planetary aspects affect my body. Because remember, the Ori on Earth, they deal with your body. Netsuru, cosmic forces, they're stars and gateways, okay? So that star energy is projected into a body. It has to be animated a certain way. Once you understand the Netsuru and how the planets relate to your body, the Ori, your seven chakras, your seven African powers, the seven powers of African man or woman, you, beca you begin to become a fourth and fifth and higher dimensional being. And when you become one of those beings, spiritually what you end up looking like is a Hindu diva with three or four arms. Four, six arms, sometimes multiple heads, sometimes multiple mouths. But if you don't understand that balance, to some people it might look scary. Other people that understand that divine balance is deemed as beautiful, right? This is what we're becoming. When we say that we are becoming gods and goddesses again or we're becoming uh 5d 6d 7d 9d beings what we're really saying is we're graduating from our landlocked earthbound energy of the seven chakras only and we've started to embrace our cosmic origins our cosmic energies and um remembering where we came from you ever heard the term star seed that's what it means you're netaru netur your nature is that of the stars, that of the cosmos, that of the waters of noon. But you're in an earthbound vessel locked in with these seven ories, or these seven ories, or these seven chakras. And when you balance those out, you become a diva. Who's a diva? Name the divas. Tina Turner, Diana Ross, uh, Patti LaBelle, Beyonce, Mariah Carey, they're divas. They've stepped into their higher goddess energy and are able to use that power of song to propel them to heights most people never, ever in life will see. You have the same ability, but in order to do that, you have to understand the law of correspondence, not only in the aspect of as above, so below in its base form, but what does this mean for energies and deities as well? And then apply that to the types of systems that you work with and the types of things that you're interested in and see how all of those balance out. I'm giving you my personal example of how I deal with the Ori and the Netar and the Devas and how it relates to me and how I became Kansu. Kansu is the Lord of the Moon. Kansu is the Lord of Time. I have always had a fascination with time and understanding 
cycles and when to do things and when not to do things and history of civilizations and, and religions and spiritual practices and stuff like that. I've always had a fascination with that. So of course, I would be akin to the energy of the Lord of time. He's also the protector of women and children. Well, I come from a family full of women. Men are rare, so I've always been a protector of women and children. You see how that energy equates to me knowing who I am as Kamsu? That's all I'm trying to say. So the ritual, to get on another topic for this full moon, because it rises twice. It started late in the day on September 13th. Today, September 14th, so it'll rise again today full. We won't have another one until 2049, so you might want to get on it because the energy of this moon we're having tonight, today, is mad impactful for the next 20 plus years. So you want to start setting your reality up now. Why am I at the river? <laughs> because you got to cleanse with river water. If you're by ocean, get in the ocean. Walk around in it. Talk to it. The energies that are healing us right now coming from this harvest moon, because what does it mean to harvest? It means to... Uh, Take all the plants that you planted throughout the spring and they grew in the summertime. Take them so it's time to eat, which whatever you planted earlier in the years, years, plural, not just this year, but previous years is coming to a head. We're starting to manifest these things. But in order to do that, you want to cleanse yourself off. OK. And when you get to the river, like I am, if you have locks and you don't want to get your hair wet, make sure you take a little bit. You see this scoop, scoop a little bit of water in your hand. And drip that right on your crown like that there. You take, you scoop a little bit, and you drip that on your crown. You want to do that three times. Why? As above, so below. As within, so without. Those are the three. We want to begin to merge these energies, the three pillars, okay? Mind, body, and spirit. The mind is the netter. The body is the ori. The spirit are the Hindu devas. And that's how they play together. But we forgot this knowledge over time. And these spiritual systems were split into religious platforms. Because all of these thought processes originated from the same space. Different people uh, tell the story with different names. Okay, So the same stories that you get in the Bible are the same stories you're going to read in Egypt in the Book of Dead, which are the same stories you're going to read in the Quran, which are the same stories that you're going to read in the Bhagavad Gita which are the same stories you're going to read elsewhere. Just different names for different people. It's the same stories you're going to read over there in Rome. It's the same stories you're going to read in Greece. They just change the names of people because different people tell them the story. So they make their gods look like them. The difference between them making the gods look like them at that point is we're the gods on earth now. And we look like us. So if you know, like myself, that um, Kamsu is Chang'o, in the Ori, these different deities had different offerings that people were leaving for them for centuries, right? So remind you of what energies that you need to get this vessel at its optimal point for you to express your God body, right? So for Chang'o, he likes offerings of okra, chicken, anything spicy, beer, red wine. Those are, you know, just a few. There's a couple other things. But I look at my personal self and I love all of those things. Why do I love all of those things? And why do I get more spiritual downloads after I eat those things that are considered offerings for Shango? It's because that's tapping me into the energy of Shango, but reminding me and tapping me back into the energy of myself. To bring in that as above to the so below in my within when I eat it so I can express that energy without as in outside of my body and explain it to people and embody it, right? You call yourself a god and goddess, you need to know which one you are and start dealing with the offerings, not necessarily to offer them to your your um, your icons or to that energy or to the rivers, but offer them to yourself. Start eating it. Start eating the offerings that you're supposed to offer to Oshun and see how much sweeter your life gets. Because a lot of people like to offer things to Oshun, like honey, but they don't know that Oshun was poisoned. So you're supposed to taste the honey first anyway before you give it to her to make sure that she doesn't get poisoned again, right? But what does this mean for yourself? 
it means you always supposed to take the sweetest things in life. Yes, first for yourself. But that's a primary example of you are supposed to eat of the offerings in this current time. So just think about that. Marinate on it. Leave a comment below. If you guys like the content, make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe. Just wanted to talk about a couple things. It's more so a channel than anything else on this video. I kind of went all over the place, but it's cool. That's how spirit and energy works. Like I said, these messages were coming from Jehudi at the beginning of the video. So, I guess y'all at a later date, man. Peace.